Well, hello. This is Nicole Law Liberty with Cowgirls and Spurs. Our last live, a couple minutes ago, got disconnected for some reason, and I'm assuming it was my connection because I don't have very many bars. So, not sure what that's all about, but now I'm on Wi-Fi, and hopefully this will go through. So, I'm just going to keep going, putting together this video, because I can always download it and re-upload it. So, hopefully my connection will work this time. Welcome back if you found me again. This is Nicola Liberty with Cowgirls and Spurs. We always have technical glitches. We just kind of roll with it. Okay, so like I was saying, I just want to recap because this is the video that will get posted, not the other one. This is a rake that I got from a friend of mine. He was heading to the dump. Hello, Melissa. Um, and he was going to throw this in his dump pile. And I retrieved it from him before he had a chance to. So you can use something similar to this project. You don't have to necessarily use a rake. But if you have something fun like this, a broom or um, a shovel or something really cool that you can kind of get into the harvesting theme, it would be really great. For me, I'm using this dirty old rusty green rake. And so what I started to do before I got disconnected is I started to thread a little wire that I have through the hole that's already in the handle where the hole, where the, um, the, the tall... No, I can't even talk. The handle part, the long rake part, would have been stored. And so, hello everybody. So what I did is I just basically took the wire and I was starting to say that I don't have any rhyme and reason about the way I wire things. I just kind of make it up as I go. I do a lot of twisting on itself. Um, I do a lot of reinforcing just to make sure it will hang. Okay, and then I'm probably just going to create a, a loop like this, maybe twist it a little bit on itself. I want to make sure I'm still on. I could keep talking and probably would be disconnected and I wouldn't even know it because I was too busy engrossed in my project. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of try and feed it back through this hole to reinforce it a little bit. Do what feels comfortable. Um, this one is not going to be for my door, so I really don't know the type of door that somebody would hang it on. So I want to make sure that I'm kind of covered for a large enough hook so that, you know, they've got some security once this has a little bit of weight on it, it won't be going anywhere. Okay, I'm just gonna improvise because it's not letting me thread it back through. So I'm just gonna twist it and twist it and twist it and twist it until I think it's totally secure. Okay, and remember, we're making a primitive project, and a lot of these projects are very rusty and rugged. Okay, so all I did was create a nice little loop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside so we can do some of the embellishments and um, work with a little bit of that. So, I have these fun signs that I'm starting to carry in the uh, craft supply section of Cowgirls and Spurs. I put a little burlap behind it so you can see one. This is a rusty metal sign and it says harvest. It's a metal um, wall sign, but it's also a stencil. Hello again, Stephanie. Welcome back. I'm sorry that was weird. I don't know. I'm still in the mountain, so there you go. So these are available in the craft supply section of Cowgirls and Spurs. Okay, I'm going to use one of those today. And so what I did is I cut out a little strip of fabric and I want to show you how I cut it. So it basically has about, I don't know, a half inch going all the way around so that there's a nice little edge around the perimeter of my harvest stein. I already started to kind of pull strings a little bit and fray the edges by just grabbing a couple of the threads and pulling them out on the ends and I want to do the same thing for the sides. So I'm just going to grab a couple strings at a time not pulling any, any too crazy amount because you don't want to completely unravel your backing to your sign because it's going to really make the harvest words pop. And you need some substance there of solid behind the sign. So I'm just gently pulling out just maybe two or three. Okay, so it's just got a little bit of a frayed edge right here. It's a little bit more pronounced here. I could probably pull a couple more strings here and then you've got your edge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of hot glue my harvest sign to the back of the burlap just so it's nice and secure because we're going to sew it with our wire. But I do want to make sure it's nice and flat. So I'm just going to kind of go ahead and gauge where, um, 
where I want my sign to lay down. And I'm going to go upside down with it, I think. I don't know, because glue, you know what, let's just stick to the desk. My desk is already really stuck with glue. I have to sand it down and repaint it, so I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it and make a mess, okay? All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of my hot glue, kind of bend up where I know my sign's going to be, and just kind of pop some glue in the corner. Just a little bit of glue to tack it down. And I'm going to kind of go all the way around with the edges. Just so it's not, it's really not getting crazy on me is what I'm trying to say. You want some security here with your burlap when you start wrapping it. And so that's all I'm doing is a little tacking. I'm already ready for some more glue. Let me go ahead and get another glue stick in. So that I can keep on going. Did you guys have a wonderful day? So you can tell, earlier today I was in a tank top because it was so hot in here. Um, today I'm in a long sleeve. Now I'm in a long sleeve. That's how wonky our weather is. It doesn't really know what it wants to do. And then of course the thunder and lightning and rainstorm that we had unexpectedly last night. Hi Lori. Okay. So there's my tacking. So you can just kind of see it gave it a nice little pop where you can see the words harvest really, really well. Okay, that's all I'm doing with that. So let's set that aside for right now until I'm ready to wire it. Now let's bring in our, um, let us bring in our rake. Okay, and I'm gonna start cutting some wires here so that I can already have some pre-cut. I just wanna find my end. I just had it two seconds ago. I'm going to cut about, I don't know, an inch. This is pretty inexpensive wire, and I can afford to not be super stingy with it because I have a tendency to be a little bit stingy with my wires. I love rusty wires, and it's hard to make rusty wires. So it takes a lot of time. So I'm going to cut four, about, again, a foot long. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to bring in my harvest sign. I'm going to kind of position them how I want them on here so that I can sew them with my wire. Okay, so here's my rake. I can see my little teeth on the bottom, and then I've got my harvest sign. And I kind of want them at an angle because to me that just adds a little bit of charm. So I'm just gonna kind of simply position them where I want them and then I'm gonna start threading through my burlap around one of my spindles, thread it back through, okay? So I'm creating essentially a stitch with my wire. And then I'm just gonna start wrapping them around the teeth, come back through and do kind of a haphazard wiring okay and then when I wrap it around the back side I twist it off all right so let me show you what it looks like I'm just gonna get this twist going and then just kind of flatten it and hold on to this so you can see my little knotting action back here it's just a lot of zip time like you would on a bread the top of your bread bag and whoops on this side where is it See, it's so subtle. But it's just a little wire stitch. What that's doing is securing your sign for one and tying in that little rustic decor as we start incorporating a little bit of wire in our project. So I'm gonna come back up in here and find where I can kind of thread through and just complete it in all four of my corners. Okay, so bring it through, kind of wrap it around. It's like cross stitching because you can never figure out where you're supposed to come up through again. This is why I don't sew. It's too much. But I love to do the wire stitching. Okay, I'm going to pull it tight. Okay. And then continue to kind of wrap it around and just repeat the process. with me so far? <laughs> You're probably thinking, girl, where do you come up with this stuff, right? Okay, well, I don't do, I, sometimes I go on Pinterest, but sometimes I don't. I just, I don't know where it comes from. 
I have so much, um, I, have, I used to have a uh, upcycling vintage business where I had a bunch of this stuff on hand. So you see that? So when I moved up to the mountain from the city, I brought a lot of it with me and it's kind of been moving with me. And so when I need inspiration, I literally go into my junk pile and just start getting inspired. And then from there, you know, my mom sends me up a ton of stuff that she finds in her area. And then I do go to secondhand stores and I just, you can't help but just fall in love with the ability of repurposing an item that would have been in the dump. I don't know. For me, that's just totally delightful. And it just makes me feel like I'm creating and giving back at the same time, if that makes sense. Okay. And I just have one more corner to do here. And then we can work on getting this thing gorgeous. You know what I really like about this particular rusty wire is it is so easy to work with. When you need to do decorative pieces or accents or tie things like I'm doing right now and kind of sewing these things on, it's so easy to work with. It's kind of like a thick um, embroidery thread. It just keeps, just keeps on doing what I want it to do. And it holds everything really tight and secure. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to start carrying this wire because I just fell in love with it. Okay, my final twist. And then just kind of flatten it on itself and kind of smush it. And there it's nice and secure. So this thing can wobble in the wind. It can fan off your friend. It can defend you from intruders. Whatever it will. And the harvest sign will still be displaying and doing what it does. Got that? Okay. Let's set it aside. All right. Let's bring in the La Liberty bow block. Let's make some embellishments. You're gonna be, I hope, thrilled with what I'm gonna come up with right now. Okay, so on the last tutorial, I said I was gonna use this fun little rope, and I didn't incorporate it because, you know, I always offer more options than there are not options. That way you guys can choose. But what I did is I unraveled the rope. So I have these nice little um, curly cued kind of wavy beach blonde hair um, strands. I might use those. I'm just going to kind of play with it a little bit because I have a lot of things that I want to do. I have these fun little sticks. These are just straight sticks that I collect or I've purchased or I take apart off of old wreaths. Um, where did I get the harvest sign? At cowgirlsandspurs.com in the craft section. It's one of the signs and the rusty materials for crafting that I'm going to be carrying. So that's where you can get it. So I'm going to be using some of these sticks today too. I kind of have an idea of how I'm going to do this, so I'm hoping it's going to come out really cool. And then I have some raffia because you know in all primitive stuff, raffia just kind of takes it to that primitive level. So I might incorporate a little bit of that. And then I have this beautiful ribbon that I just dyed that I'm going to be adding to cowgirlsandspurs.com to the supply section for some of our custom ribbons. It's in this beautiful pumpkin color. Okay, and then this is also going to be in the craft supply section of Cowgirls and Spurs. I am so excited about these. I got to tell you, it is right up the Cowgirl Alley. Okay, this is this beautiful metal rusty bow. And we can kind of manipulate it to be exactly the way we want it. You can find these also in cowgirlsandspurs.com in the in the craft supply section. So we're going to kind of incorporate it. All right, it's getting a little dusty. Now for this one, I'm going to go ahead and go with a darker cable tie because I wanted to kind of blend in and hide and I don't want white to be on this because this is a dark green rake. So I'm going to use black and I have my vertical one and then I have my horizontal one. Okay. And then I'm going to try something a little bit different. I want to see how this plays out. And there's a method behind my madness. So this handle up here is round. Okay, if I attach something to it, it will probably stay in place, but it probably won't be as stable as it would if I added some sort of a backing to it. So I thought I would try to add some fun elements into my bow that I'm going to add onto this that will add just a little bit more texture. 
this is where your sticks are going to come in. Now these aren't as wide as a straw. These are really thin sticks. You can kind of see how thin they are. I mean, there's my finger in comparison. They're really tiny. You can find these outside, use whatever sticks you want. I just happen to have these on hand. So I am going to start with, that one's not one I want, four sticks going diagonal, but crisscross over the center of my bow block. Okay, so let me see if I can kind of get them so that they don't fall out. So here's your center point right here. You can see the cross of those zip tie. I went diagonal, okay? And so you can kind of get a visual. We're gonna do a horizontal, and then we're gonna do the other diagonal, okay? But I don't want them, I want them sticking out a little bit, but I definitely want them across the threshold of how we're gonna zip, okay? I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna come into the other way and overlap just four for right now. And I'm gonna repeat the process going in the other diagonal. And four going across that. So now we've got the diagonals in both sections. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with four going across the front horizontally and four going the other way. Okay, so they're all overlapping. Now I'm going to start layering. The first thing I'm going to do, let me get these sticks out of the way because I'm done with my sticks, is I'm going to take this rope, this curly rope, and I'm going to lay it horizontally right over the top, kind of so that it's centered in the middle. Just want to make sure you guys can see this okay. Okay? And then what I'm gonna do is take a little piece of my ribbon here, and I'm probably gonna pull out about 18 inches. I'm eyeballing it just from cutting ribbons all day long, I'm eyeballing it. You're gonna take the ends, overlap them, lay it flat, turn the folds over, and go right over the top in the horizontal in between the pegs. Okay, and just straightening out my wrinkles. I'm going to take a little of my raffia. Stretch it out a little bit so I have some nice long strands. Making sure my strands are somewhat even. Okay. Get this one. This one's bugging me. And I'm going to start looping. So I'm going to go loop, loop loop, 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 and loop until I have no more strands. That's all I've got, okay? I'm gonna put that one right on top. Bring in a little bit more of my ribbon. Okay, I don't want any loops. And I'm going to go ahead and slip them over the bottom two pegs, making them a little uneven. Okay, so they're not even on both sides. That's the end of it. Okay, so let me show you before I strap it. Can you see that? I don't want my sticks to fall out. So I'm gently going to go ahead and Let me just think for a second. I think I want to, before I tie it, no, I'm going to go ahead and loop it. Because I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now I'm going to pull this a little tight as I pull up because I really want to secure those sticks. But I know the sticks are going to come together as I pull. And that's why I separated them so much. Because I wanted it to create this star effect. Make sure it's nice and tight and I'm going to go ahead and clip. my tag off, I mean my, my zip tie. So I still have this one for attaching. Does that make sense? Okay, let me get this out of here. Grab your wire. I'm gonna zip off a pretty decent amount, probably about two feet, okay? I'm gonna bring in my little wire here to see what side I like. I think I like this one. And I'm gonna lay it right over the top of my bow finding my center and kind of moving the tails out of the way 
and I'm gonna start wrapping my wire and I'm gonna hold it with my thumb here and I'm gonna come around and just start wrapping my wire. Pull your strands out of the way and just keep on wrapping until you come to the end of your wire and then twist it again like the bread tie. Okay, I'm going to lay this one flat, but I have a little end here, so I need to cut that off because that one's just going to be kind of willy-nilly out there and I don't want it willy-nilly out there. Okay, so this is what I have so far and now we need to fix our bow. So I'm going to lay it flat and I'm just going to kind of drop some of my bow strands down, my, my orange ones, and I'm going to pick up some of these little rusty wire ones and pop them up just a little bit so they're 3D. The harvest sign is at cowgirlsandspurs.com in the, in the craft supply section. I don't know if the, um, okay, so there's your bow so far, okay? Now before we attach it, we want to do all the manipulations while it's off of our wreath so that we can get um, some of these manipulations in here. Now normally I use, um, to make the little tendrils, I use a Sharpie that's really, really um, thick. That one's not going to be thick enough for me, so I'm going to see what I can use here to get a little bit thicker of a spiral. Something like this. This is my stress spray so that I don't stress out. <laughs> Doesn't always work. And I'm just gonna wrap my little tendrils around my bottle to create a little bit of a curly cue. And then I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing with each strand. Just be, you know what, be good to yourself. This wire is you know, it sometimes has a mind of it, uh, its own, but just be patient. It's worth it if you're patient. Okay. And then I'm just, like, you're, little, you're making little ringlets, essentially. Okay, I don't want this one to break. This one feels a little wonk, weak. All right. Okay, I'm going to... This one feels a little bit wonky, like it might break on me, and I don't want it to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stretch these out a little bit to make some curly cues. Okay? Pull my little ropes down for the tails. Creates a little bit more texture down below. Get them out of my sticks and pull them down a little bit so they're dangling. Okay, so that's our bow so far. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now if you recall, we still have this little zip tie here. And we wanna get this guy so that it's kind of offset a little bit, but centered, if that makes sense. I want him up a little higher. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, I kind of have an idea of where we want to go, but I know that he's going to slip on this little piece right here. So we're going to take a little rope, and I get this rope at the Dollar Tree. This is one of those items that I say, oh yeah, you get it at the Dollar Tree because you've saved so much money. It's worth it. Okay, these little guys come taped. I'm going to go ahead and, and use the tape because I don't want it to unravel with me. And so I'm just going to start um, kind of at the base here, and I'm going to go on the back side because that's where I want my end to start. And I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here and attach my rope. I just want to make sure you can see me. Okay? And then I'm going to stand here and I'm going to wait for the glue to dry. <laughs> Hello from Carolina. You guys, I'm so happy. This has been like my head's been down and I'm crafting. So I will be reading all these videos tonight, or all these comments on our videos, and I'm also going to be uploading the videos to Cowgirls and Spurs in the video gallery tonight. So they'll be ready for viewing um, by the end of, hopefully this evening, if not by tomorrow morning. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna start wrapping some rope around and I'm gonna tack it maybe every two swipes with a little bit of glue because I don't want this sliding. I'm hoping this is what's gonna be my foundation for my ribbon bow. Okay, come around again with a little swipe of glue. And I'm not putting so much on that it's kind of squirting through the rope because I don't want to see my glue. I want this to be as rustic as possible. So go around once, go around twice, and then add your glue. Okay, so as I get to the top and I'm doing my wrap, I'm gonna leave a slight gap in one of them as I get to the top. So here's once and twice. And then after I glue this one is where I'm gonna leave my gap. Okay, so this one's gonna be secured. This one's gonna be secured. And now I'm just gonna leave a slight gap in here because where I want my zip tie to go is I want it to kind of be pulled and snug in those two, that little gap between the wires. And so I'm gonna end up gluing this next one, but I'm gonna glue it up a little bit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about as soon as I get it secured. Okay, and then I'm going to get my last one on here and I think I'm going to need to cut it. And go ahead and secure that top one. And then I'll show you exactly what I mean when I say I needed to secure it. Um, okay, can you see that little gap? It's ever so subtle. Get that out of the way. Let's get some of this rust and dirt and gunk off of the desk because we're going to bring in our little ribbon. Okay. All right. So grab your zip tie and I always tell you when you're making these ribbons or these bows with the bow block, you want to pull the, the locking mechanism. Hi Diane. Hi Elsie. I already said hi, Elsie, but I'm saying hi again um, because my comments aren't threading up. Okay. You want to have this, uh, this area shorter so that when you're pulling it, it's already right there and tight. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Let me get in here. Make sure my locking mechanism is pointing the right direction. You want to fix this before you start pulling because it'll just make your life that much easier. Okay. And then I'm just going to pick this up. I'm going to make sure that my zip tie kind of goes into that little nook before I grab on to my locking mechanism. Okay. Get out of there. That doesn't belong. Okay. And then I'm going to start zipping it tight. Okay. Once it's super tight, take your wire cutters and cut it. Okay, so now our ribbon's blocking our harvest, but we're gonna fix that. But we just needed to get our little kind of wonky little bow on there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pliers and very carefully I'm gonna push that lock so that it's underneath my bow, okay? Just like that. Now I'm gonna come in with a little glue and I'm gonna kinda of just tack everything in there. Get underneath, just start adding a little bit of reinforcement in there with your glue, okay? We are getting there. All right, so now this is where I would pull my ribbons off to the side and tack them down. So I'm pulling out my fabric. I'm gonna do this to the side so you can kind of see it. Now I'm gonna try really hard not to manipulate my bow because I kind of want him off-centered like he's got a little swagger to him. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take my, my ribbons. This is a perfect time to kind of trim them, 
fray them a little bit, and then tack them to your sign. So I add a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue, I lay it flat, and I squish it. Okay, and I create these little wrinkles. I'll show you again. So I'm going to trim it. I don't want to be blocking the harvest sign. So I'm going to tack it on my ribbon, tack it on my ribbon, kind of lay it flat and squish it up. Squish it kind of up so that you create these little wrinkles. Can you see those little wrinkles right there? Okay. Now I have one more. I'm going to trim this one a little shorter. And I'm just doing an angle cut. I don't need to have the dovetails. I think it's the dovetails is what it's called. I add a little glue, add a little glue. It's getting a little shorter, so I'm adding the glue to my rake and then kind of smooshing it into a wrinkle. Okay, I think I need to trim this one a little bit more because it's blocking my teeth. So that's where you can kind of come in and do a little finessing so you can read the harvest. And I'm just going to kind of repeat this over here, adding a little color on the other side. And I think I want this one to be a little shorter. Okay, so again, tack, smush, do a tacking and a smushing. Ouch, don't burn yourself. Okay. That's where we're at so far. Get this little chunk of glue out. Okay? Now I just wanna add a little bit more color because I love the orange, I love that pop, but I want a little bit more of a centerpiece to my arrangements because it's just still not enough. It doesn't say harvest yet. So what I want to do is add some berries with some nuts in this primitive little pick that I found. Okay? So I'm just going to add a little bit in and out of my my design here, kind of tucking it. It to me would just bring in a little bit more of that. I just finished harvesting berries. I've got the nuts for winter. It just kind of brings in a little bit more of that Beautiful harvest, primitive, um, living off the land, homesteader, I don't know. You know all the above. And I'm just going to kind of go right in the center of my rusty, my rusty bow. And I'm going to hold on to it a little bit. I have one more. Pull these out of the way just a little bit. See if I can kind of figure out where I want to put it. Yeah, I feel like I want it right up top here. So let me see if I can kind of maneuver my little bows out of the way. Get a little bit of glue in there and then come underneath it and kind of reinforce it underneath. But I don't want to clog up where my, my beans are. There's little berries here, a little wood I guess they're berries, they're not really beans. Okay, and then what I like to do too is, because I like to have things just so sometimes, but I don't want it to look so, so I'll tack down my leaves. I'll kind of come in here and just start really kind of reinforcing my leaves so that they stay where I want them. They don't interrupt my design at all. And they just kind of stay put. Okay, let's hope they don't fall off. I think the glue is pretty secured, but this is hot, hot glue. Okay. There you go. I love it. It's fun. Look at the back. Let me see if I can just hold it with this wire. And there's the front. So just a, a little rustic, something a little different. A little pop of color. It just reaps of harvest. I love it, you guys.
Thanks for coming along and playing with me for another day, another time today. I will post pictures and the video up on my website. It'll be up by tomorrow morning at the very latest. Love spending the afternoon with you. I hope you have a great day. Make sure you spread the goat loves. Shake out those turkey feathers. I love it. I'll see you all real soon. Bye.